five things that have made a major impact in my life. As far as my life today, who I am today, the person I've become. You know, it's safe to say, guys, and I'm sure you'd agree that our lives are shaped by our experiences. Like all of them. The good ones, the the bad ones, the happy ones, the sad ones. And when we reflect back, more often than not, we can identify the ones that have impacted us the most. Whether, again, they're happy ones, sad ones big ones, small ones, whatever it may be, these experiences, we can identify, if we look back and reflect, the ones that have had the biggest, most influential impact in our lives. And it's a great exercise, actually, to reflect back, to not only give ourselves, really, an understanding of, you know, how we've arrived at at being the person that we are today, but also to share these experiences with others. For the whole, you know, to help them on their journey. You know, whether it's friends, family, significant other, clients, heck, it could be coworkers, complete strangers, really, in order to inspire them, to encourage them, to motivate them on their own journey. Whenever we can share our experiences, again, guys, it could be good ones, bad ones, happy ones, sad ones. We have the opportunity to make this impact in the lives of others as well. Not just in ours, give ourselves an understanding of our lives, but impact others on their journey. And so that's why here today, guys, I want to share with you five things that have impacted my life the most. And I've actually boiled it down to five things. And the way I've really looked looked to keep this simple is to pick a person, a place, a thing, a book, and an event that has had the biggest impact impact in my life and let's first start with a person and man I could really pick a ton here but there's one person that had a major impact in my life and this is back when I was like 23 I had just moved to California I was working at a gym and I was looking training a client at the time and I'll never forget at that time I was you know two decades really of of just being told you're not good enough smart enough you know you're a loser you're a punk you know, finally to have someone, this is a client of mine, her name is Barbara Benedict, and I keep thinking one of these days she's going to hear this episode or any one of my episodes where I talk about her a ton, and finally I can, you know, uh, just re-engage with her and, and thank her once again for the impact she's had on my life, but she looked at me after one of the sessions we had, looked me square in the eyes and asked me, she goes, Mike, what are you doing here? You know, and I said, well, I'm, I'm working, I'm training clients, I'm seeing you. She goes, no, 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 what are you doing here? And she looked at me with a really just laser focus and said, you're so much better than you think. And that day changed my life. That started my journey of personal development that has lasted now. Um, that was about 20 years because I was 23, I'm 43. It started my journey of a 20 year personal development process of getting better and better and better. And that's all because of this person, Barbara Benedict, who had this major impact in my life. As far as a place that's had a major impact in my life, that would have to be Portugal, you know, where my family is from. I'm Portuguese. My family's from Portugal. They come from a small village up north. In Portuguese, it's pronounced Covers de Barroso. It's, uh, you know, behind, like, this area is called Petraj dos Montes. It's behind the mountains, as they call it. But that's the little village that my family's from. And I was just there during my six-month around-the-world trip. And I actually met up with one of the ladies who still lives there, who's a friend of our family, who's known my, you know, my whole family, my, my aunts, my uncles, my dad, my mom, she's still there. And she, when I was back there with her, she was reflecting back on some stories about them growing up and, you know, brought her to tears and actually brought me to tears too. But the one thing I'll never forget, the impact, the place that that place that, that it had on me is the fact that that's where my family grew up, this village that there was not much. I mean, if you saw these places where they grew up, it was tiny, tiny. They used to go in the bathroom out. It was like there wasn't even an outhouse. You just go, go in the woods, <laughs> go, go somewhere outside. And but the place is so special because it's this amazing place where they had so little, but they had everything they needed. They all bonded together. Back in the day, this is what this lady was telling me. They used to play music and laugh and tell jokes and be out, you know, by the you know moonlight. They didn't have much back in the day. But this amazing small village, this place that my family's from, where they experienced so much happiness and joy and just closeness and just this place had this impact on me where it's like you know what it really doesn't matter where you are 
You know, it's, it's all about the place, who you're with, what you're doing, laughing, sharing, connecting. That is amazing. And this place in Portugal, my village, where my family's from, brought me that experience. It was amazing. I'll never forget it. A thing that's made a major impact in my life is an email I got. This is years ago now, guys. This is probably dating back... I'd say five years ago when I had first started my, you know, online business. And at the time it was called the wellness bucket. And I was doing a lot of writing, you know, about, you know, health, happiness, fulfillment. And I didn't think anyone was paying attention. No, I was doing it because I really believed in it. And I was, I was probably about eight, nine months into it and thinking, you know, no one's really paying attention. Well, should I keep doing this? I'm, you know, no, this isn't making an impact. This isn't making anyone's life better. And just when I was starting to think that and get discouraged, I got an email from someone who said, hey, Mike, just wanted to let you know that I've been following your work for a while now. <laughs> and this last piece you did was amazing. It actually changed my life. It made me it made me think differently, give me a different perspective on life, and it really made a major impact in my life. I want you to know that. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. And this is from someone I knew way back, I think, like in high school. But meanwhile, I had been writing for like eight, nine months. I never once saw a like or a share or a comment or anything. I didn't even think this person was listening. And then out of the blue... They write me this email. And the reason why it had such a major impact in my life is because it made me realize that I, you, we never know who we are impacting by our words, by what we write, by our actions. We never know where we think maybe no one's watching or listening. We'd be surprised to think that, you know what, they are watching, they are listening, we are making an impact, sometimes whether we know it or not. So I, you know, it made me think like, Mike, keep showing up because whether you know it or not, you're making a difference and impact. And I never forgot that email. That's the thing, that email that's had the major, most biggest impact in my life. It keeps me going at times when I'm thinking, man, am I really making a difference? Yeah, you are. Because even if people aren't telling you, like this person didn't tell you for eight, nine months, you are, you impacted someone. That was a major one for me. A book that's impacted me tremendously is a book called The Obstacle is the Way. The book is called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Highly recommend it. The whole idea is that the obstacle, the hurdles, the challenges that we see in front of us, they're not challenges and hurdles and obstacles, meaning stopping us. No, that, that obstacle is the way. That hurdle is the way. The challenge is the way. It's not around it or turning around. It's actually going, heading towards it, facing it, face on. Going through it, that is the way to success, to happiness, to health, to fulfillment. And this book talks about that. The obstacle is the way. And in it, he references an amazing quote, which I love by Marcus, Marcus Aurelius. And the whole idea is, the impetus to action is action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Essentially saying what stands in the way, that is the way. Don't go around and try to get around or over it or turn around. Go through that challenge, the obstacle. That is the way. It's changed the perspective on any challenge that comes my way. You know, whether it's personal, professionally, financially, emotionally, spiritually. I know that the obstacle, the challenge that's in front of me, that is the way. So go it. Go that way. Because that's the way to go to get to where I want to get to. And lastly, an event in my life that's changed my life, impacted my life tremendously, that was the loss of my dad. Losing my dad to cancer when he was 57. This is 13 years ago now. And the reason why that was such a tough loss, it still is to this day, but it really brought a major sense of gratitude to my life. Being grateful for all it is I have, for the people in my life, for the things in my life, for the experiences in my life. You know, not waiting to live. You know, like my dad was waiting until he was retired. Not waiting to live, to go do, you know, to, to do stuff. I'm going to wait till I'm retired to go travel. I'm going to wait till this happens to do this. No, not waiting to live. But to actually live now when I have a chance. Today, this very moment, live now because tomorrow isn't guaranteed. I learned that with my dad. Also to tell others how I feel about them. Never miss a moment to tell others how I feel about them because I might not get that chance. The major lessons I learned from losing my dad, the biggest of all is just being grateful for what we have because it's not guaranteed tomorrow. These are the five biggest impactful events that have happened in my life, guys. When it comes to a person, a place, a thing, a book, an event, viewers, give some thought to five things perhaps that have impacted your life the most. Who's that person for you? Who's that place? Or where's that place, I should say? What's that thing? 
What's the book you read? And what's that event maybe that you've experienced? Consider sharing it, one if not all of these, with someone, your next conversation, with a friend, with a family member, if they don't know it, maybe with a client. Share this because maybe, just maybe, it has an impact in their lives as well. And at the end of the day, guys, isn't that what we're trying to do together? We talk about it, talk about it here on the show all the time, a rising tide lifts all boats. If I rise, you rise. If you rise, I rise. If others rise, we all rise. Let's win together. Let's impact each other's lives by the impact that we've had in our own lives, by sharing what we've been through. That's my hope for you. That's my hope for me. That's my hope for all of us together. More health, more happiness, more fulfillment. That is today's message, guys. To Thank you so much for being here. do what we want to do. And let me tell you where this, where this whole idea and conversation stems from today. I recently received a message, like a Voxer message, where you can kind of just leave people messages, voice messages from a very good friend of mine who lives in Australia. And actually, I, when I was traveling around the world, I visited her, her husband, and her two awesome kids while I was there. And it was actually while I was visiting her during the holidays, the Christmas season, that the whole idea for Mornings with Mike came to be. So that's actually where I started my very first episode was in Australia in her house. So anyways, needless to say, very good friend of mine. And she recently left me a message um, and it was the best message, but she stated in the message, she stated that she had been waiting to actually leave me a message because she really didn't have a reason to message me other than she just wanted to say hi and just check in and see how I was doing. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. She, she mentioned she had waited. She had been meaning to message me, but she was waiting and she finally just said, you know what? I really don't have anything else to report or tell you about. I just want to reach out. I really don't have a reason to be reaching out to you other than I just want to say hi. And I thought that was so interesting because I don't think, I don't believe we need a reason just to reach out and say hi. I believe that's reason, reason enough. Better, you know, like I said, better yet, just saying hi, just want to reach out and say hi, that is reason enough, right? Just wanting to reach out, that is a reason. <laughs> Versus like needing some like, big news or something new that's happened and she wants to share with me to have a quote unquote reason to reach out. Just thinking of someone wanting to reach out and say, hey man, I was thinking about you, I wanted to reach out and just say hi. That, in my opinion, guys, is reason and not enough. And let me ask you, do you ever do that? Do you ever do that? Like where you, you feel like you need a reason to do something. And I know in this case, I'm talking about my good friend and you know how she felt she needed a reason to call me and leave me a message. But how about you? Do you do that? Where you need a reason. You feel like you need a reason to do something. And that could be anything, right? To do something nice for yourself. To buy yourself a new pair of shoes or a new article of clothing or to go get yourself a massage. Do you need a reason to do that? I mean, do you need a reason to do something nice for someone else? Maybe a friend, a family member, your significant other? Do we need a reason other than we want to? (laughs) Right? How about planning a dinner, going out to celebrate, having a nice dinner? Do we need a reason to go? Do we need something to celebrate other than the fact that I want to go to dinner? I want to have a fancy dinner. That's what I, that's reason enough for me. Or take a trip somewhere. Or how about even take a day off work? Do we need a reason? Oh, I have to go to the dentist. I have to take my kid to the, you know, to the doctor or I have to get my car or whatever inspected. Do we need a reason? What if we just want to take a day to, for ourselves to enjoy it, to rest, to catch up on beach in our tan or whatever else just meet up with a good friend or maybe playing you know a little hooky with your significant other and having a blast that day i mean that's reason enough right do we need a quote-unquote reason to do any one of these how about just because i want to as a reason how about that guys how about you and i consider that going forward the fact that you know what just because i want to and that's my reason The fact that I want to, that is my reason, and darn it, it's reason enough for me. (laughs) That's what I'm suggesting you and I going forward, we do. You know, not only, and here's a scoop, not only do we not need permission to do what it is we want to do, we don't need permission, but we also don't need a reason other than the fact that we want to do it. And I want to repeat that. Not only do we need permission, right? I'm sure you've heard the saying, you know, we don't need permission from others to act and do the things we want to do. I agree with that 100%. But not only do we not need permission, we also don't need a quote-unquote reason 
other, other than the fact that we want to do it, reason is enough in my book. <laughs> reason that you just want to do it, I want to do it, that's enough in my book. And that is why, yeah, sometimes I go to dinners and it's a fun dinner. And, you know, the people will ask, the server will ask, the, you know, concierge, everyone will ask, hey, what's the big occasion? There is no occasion. The occasion is, you know what, I want to go out to dinner. And that's reason enough. I was just feeling like going out, having a great dinner, having a fun time, getting a nice bottle of wine. That is reason enough. You know, when I went to travel the world, people people thought like, hey, what are you, are you celebrating like a big thing to happen with your business? Are you just kind of celebrating like an engagement? Are you celebrating what's going on? And the whole idea was like, no, the reason was I just want to see the world. I mean, that was my, re- my reason. And I think sometimes either people think like we need like a bigger reason and we really don't. Like even my friend thought she needed a reason to reach out to me, leave me a message. You don't. Just the fact that you want to reach out, that is reason enough. And so I encourage you and I going forward that whatever it is we want to do, remember, not only do we not need permission to do it, we also don't need a reason because wanting to do it is reason enough.